G'day Spurs fans, Paul the Hot Spur Hippie here, the only psychedelic soccer show on the internet. It's quite a nice lovely day here in sunny but cold Sydney, autumn's well and truly here. I've just had a little uh, browse around the Spursosphere uh, yesterday and this morning and you know what, you know what? I have been avoiding it for a few weeks because of our four, four game losing streak but it wasn't as bad as I expected. It's, it was actually much more of a, and I'm, I'm sort of generalizing here, the impression I got, it was much more of a accepting, okay, heads down, bums up, let's just keep going kind of thing. We, we, we're rebuilding, We've got a, we're, we're, knock, we're in the process at the moment of knocking it all down and uh, you know, progress in football isn't like this linear little line you can draw on a graph there's bits and things going up and down I mean when you think of a dressing room how complicated is that environment and I'm not sport talking specifically about Tottenham here but you know if you've got in theory you know say 20 odd blokes that all want to be the best and some want to stay there some are lazy some uh, want to go, some don't like this person, some don't like that person. There's a lot going on. And when the pressure builds up in a season, uh, a lot more can come out. And we're in that end of the season, that we're in that point of the season where the pressure's on. And it's all well and good to uh, you know, have that great streak of what, first 10 odd games, when uh, there's nothing at stake, it's all easy. Uh, but it's hard now, it's hard, it's the, it's the it's where games are much more meaningful and um, some of our players are showing they're, they're not up to it. And I've got to be fair here, you know, at the moment, at the moment, for a lot of them this is the first time that they've been through something like this. Maybe it's a learning process. Uh, but there are, I think, some players that this has happened more than once with and uh, I think it's time for their careers to be over. But I've got absolute faith that Ange Postagoglu is the man that sorted all that out. All that out. Now, I did pop onto Twitter. Whoa, I, I stuck my head in. It's like sticking me down a toilet. Not even a toilet, like a, a gents urinal in a dodgy pub. It was, whoa. Ange out all over the place from a bunch of clowns. And yeah, I will call them clowns because um, they're not satisfied just to say Ange out. The usual tropes are his uh, physique, his nationality, so if you're saying things like that, yeah, you're a clown. Absolutely, you're a clown. But I see now and then people on, uh, on some places saying, look, I'm Ange in, but, and then everything they'll say is basically saying Ange, Ange is incompetent. And then they'll say, but we need to get behind the manager. <laughs> and it's like, just because you say you're, you're Ange in doesn't mean you are if you're saying all this other stuff. Like, if you just took all that other stuff and compared it with someone who doesn't like Ange, they're the same things you're both saying. So, you know, so there's a lot of that going on. And my concern at the moment is, and I've got good reasons for this concern, is that we're, gonna, we're about to enter the Tottenham Hotspur annual cycle of sacking a manager. Because... When the fans don't get happy, and, and look, I don't, I don't blame, I, don't, I understand the frustration. But if the fans start shouting what they usually do, a bit of booze, a lot of Levy out, Mr. Uh, gets a bit uncomfortable, doesn't he? And we know what he does. Every single time this has happened, he sacks the manager. So it's very difficult, I think, to say, you know, on one hand, we want to back the manager, and you're not doing your part to back the manager as well. Now, I'm not blaming fans for that because it's, it's Daniel Levy that's making the decision. He's the one that's being very soft and weak by caving into fan pressure year in, year out. He doesn't have to do that. He does cave into it. So it's not really the fans that are responsible for that. Daniel Levy is his own man and making his own decisions. But it's inevitable if there's a big thing that happens often at the end of the season where we fall off and there's a lot of protests and stuff like that. Well, if you think Daniel Levy hasn't changed, why are you doing it? Because he's going to do it. Unless, of course, 
you're not really Angie in the first place, which I suspect there are a lot of people out there. When I hear people describing him as a mid-table manager with no experience, naive, I mean, these are all totally disrespectful phrases. Pulling out random stats to back up your point. Stats can back up any point you want. For instance, did you know that AVB was a more successful manager for Tottenham Hotspur than Bill, Mi Bill Nicholson? Did you know that? Statistically, it's true. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bill Nicholson, who's he? It's all AVB, bring back AVB. Because his win percentage over his, his, over his tenure at Tottenham was higher. See, that's a statistic. It means nothing. We saw in the game against Liverpool that all the hoo-ha and furore about set-piece deficiencies, we can't defend a set-piece as well. We didn't let any goals in off set-pieces against Liverpool, did we? And what happened? We still got thumped. And you see, this is what Angie's saying. It's not just about defending set-pieces. It's not just patching up one here. We're not playing whack-a-mole with this football team. We're trying to get it going in the right direction. Not just by a little tinker here. I had to move away from the roof. Phone ran out of battery. Um, yeah, it's not just a question of fixing a little thing here and a little thing there. You know, what statistic have we picked up this week? Oh, let's address that. Let's fix that. You know, as far as set pieces go, I'd say the main concern is the amount of set pieces we're conceding. We're conceding a lot of corners, a lot of free kicks in dangerous areas. That's as a result of general football play not being coached specifically where to stand when a ball is coming in from a corner. Um, and I think, you know, I've been, I've been pretty, pretty tough on the, on the players in the last few days, and I probably won't let up on that. Uh, but then, you know, part of my mind is also thinking, well, if I'm asking the players to stay strong and keep going, and play well and do what the manager says, I think we as fans have got to maybe do something like that as well and maybe not bottle it every time things go wrong and ask for another manager. Because I can see it slowly building. And my worry is if we have a bad result against Burnley, which, hey, football's a funny old game, Burnley are rubbish, but you never know. I think it could be, um, it could be at that point of the season where the fans have had enough, Levy listens, and then we get in Graham Potter or Thomas Tuchel or I don't know. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who the manager is. So I'm hoping, I'm really hoping that, uh, I hope, uh, I don't know, like I hope the, the, the fans have patience with it. Not patience, that's all right. I can see enough of, see that this is a necessary thing we have to go through, enough to you know, realise even though this is painful and horrible at the moment, it will be brighter when we come through it. Summer's around the corner. You know, that'd be kind of cool. Um, instead of just uh, falling at the first hurdle. We've been doing that for 40 years. It's, not, it's, it's time to stop doing that sort of stuff. So uh, we need to give Ange a good, uh, a good run through. And if, I don't know, the end of next season or the season after... We can't really feel it, we can't really see it, then we've got something to go on. But one season, we, this is what we have been doing. This is what we do every year. And it's not worked. So why, why are we doing it again? Why are we doing it again? And the problem is, it would be, it, you know, we've got to take the cult, uh, the, the cult of personality out, away out of it, uh, away from it. Because, you know, last year when people were paying for con, it's going to be kind of like so, so, slightly different people, I think. So... You might not, because you are not a Conte fan or you're not a Mourinho fan, doesn't mean you're not an Ange fan. It's, it's, there's probably overlap, but it's different sets of people. I don't think it's all the same people all the time. But I think there are definitely some people that agitate for this every single year. But I like what I say. They'll say, oh, I support Ange, and then they'll say nothing good about him and just criticise the hell out of him and then say, but we should back the manager. Well, why don't you back the manager, eh? Why don't you just perhaps give a little bit of support, you know? Say the good things, not all the bad things. There's got to be some good things about there. I mean, if I thought all the bad things that people are saying about Ange, my natural logical, logical conclusion in my head would be, I'm Ange out. But somehow there's people out there that managed to do all that and then they say, 
by Ange in. I never said I'm Ange out. You're an idiot if you're saying that. Anyway, I'm hoping... Um, what I'm liking at the moment, though, is I'm liking the way Ange is nice and calm in the press conferences. It's kind of... I, I get the feel. It's almost like, OK, I think he gets exactly what's going on at Tottenham Hotspur now. And he's seen what how, how things have been reacted to in the past. And he ain't going down that path. He's not going to do a Conte... These are players. He's unacceptable. You know, you don't. You shouldn't be doing that when you're manager of a football club. Whether he was saying was, what he was saying was factually right or not, I don't care. Maybe don't set yourself up to defend a one-nil deficit, Antonio. Take some blame yourself. So people keep trotting that one up. He was right. He was right. I don't care. He was manager. It's not his place to say something like that. So maybe you know. It wouldn't be a bad, a bad thing if, uh, if everyone gave, uh, maybe put their, um, their own footballing opinions to one side for a second and just recognise no matter who the manager is, we've got to go through a rough spot. Heads down, bums up, let's get on with it, Tottenham, let's go. Let's go and get, beat Burnley and be onwards and upwards for next year. A Premier League, League title challenge. Oh, that'll annoy some people. Till next time, peace and love, man. Peace and love and come with you, Spurs.